You know, there's a lot going on in the world, a lot of change and a lot of things happening, and a lot of people are asking questions. What in the world does the Bible say about it? How can it be happening right now, today? And some people are actually asking questions about America and all of that. And this is very interesting. Now, I'm going to interview with Rick Pearson. Rick, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. And man. you broadcast the program called Prophecy USA. Prophecy USA. It's and on across the nation. And it's on many stations. Many stations, a couple hundred, I think, somewhere around there. And in, we are good friends. And I, I know you do this prophecy, and I had to talk to you about this because you're prophesying. And well, when I say that, I mean you're talking about what the Bible says and what God has given you and all of that. And uh, at the same time, I'm teaching through the Bible. I think that's important. But this is critical right now because we're in a time when we need to understand what's going on. Now, your first book, by the way, it was 2017 when uh, we were in Israel. And I was swimming at the bottom of the pool. And God said, when you get up, you're going to see somebody help him. And so God helped me to help you. Uh, get started. And you now, got me on television. You you built the studio. <laughs> you did. I think I think the Lord told you to build Rick a studio. Give him your cameras. Give him your staff. Give him your profession, and do everything for free. And when you came to me and said that, I thought, well, the price is right. I better do it. <laughs> so away we went. But you're formally in business as a bus salesman. Yes. And uh, you've been on the board of pretty much everybody. One of your persons that you were involved with was Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts, I consider him as my mentor. Uh, the the teaching that I have wrought, and we've, we've discussed this before, um, in 1986 I had a revelation for seven days and uh, it was seven all about days. seven days. I, I went into a revelation knowledge and on the... What, on, the, what does that mean you went into a revelation knowledge? What happened? It was like I was receiving words from the Lord and I didn't understand it was all about America's role in Bible prophecy. And then on the seventh night of the seventh day, an audible voice woke me up, spoke to me. Uh, I had a visitation. That, that's like the prophets in the Old Testament. It was like as uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Jeremiah, I had a, every experience they had, but it was about America's role in Bible prophecy. And I was shook to the core. I jumped on a plane. I flew down to my alma mater over Roberts University and President Roberts graciously laid his hand on me because I thought I had had a total nervous breakdown or I was losing it or something spiritually was desperately wrong with me. thought you were crazy. You thought you were crazy. And he laid his hand on me and he started laughing and he said, Rick, God has spoken to you. Now, he didn't know what I'd said or what, what I was told, but I was told about America in the Bible and what was coming. And everything so far is here now from what I was told. And we wrote this book a year ago, uh, The Hour That Changes Everything. It has 53 descriptions of a Latter-day Nation called Babylon the Great. The United States of America meets every description. And our show called Prophecy USA, which you helped me produce, begins by saying this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. And folks, we are fulfilling prophecy right now. It's happening. It's here. And America is in the Bible. And if you don't understand prophecy, you cannot understand it fully unless you put America in the Bible. You put America in the Bible and all the dots will join. And we just got a, a, an email from a man in Alabama that has a doctorate of theology. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got a PhD uh, in divinity. And he said he's read this book three times. He has never understood the book of Revelation until now. And he said, this is amazing what you put together. And I didn't do it myself, Rod. I hired a, a, a publisher from Thomas Nelson who did five commentaries on the book of Revelation for Jack Hayford. Uh, he did Jack Hayford, Max Licato, Charles Stanley, uh, and John MacArthur. And I forget the other person he did it. But he's 74 years old. He, he's, he's been in writing all his life. And he went through this book and my research. And at the end of it, he said, my goodness, Rick, 
I've never seen this before in my life. You are right on. America is in the Bible. Okay, let's talk so about that's that. that's where we're at right let, now. Let me talk about that because there are many people who have never considered before that America is in the Bible prophecy. Many prophets have said America is not in the Bible prophecy, and so don't worry about it. I mean, you know, we're not mentioned, and yet this nation is a dominant nation in this world, at least in the last 80 years, maybe 100 years, a dominant nation. And so it's, it, you know, you're just supposed to dismiss it. So where do you think America is in Bible prophecy? Where is it at? Okay, this is where traditional theology has missed. The Bible says that there's hidden things in scripture. Daniel was told, seal the book. It's not until now, it'll be for the latter days. Daniel 12, right? Daniel 12, Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, the vision waits for its appointed time to be fulfilled. Um, most people who have studied prophecy all agree there's a seven year tribulation period. In the seven year tribulation period is when God's wrath comes upon the earth. During that seven year tribulation period, there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls that are released. At the end of that tribulation period, it talks about Babylon. And it says, after the final bowl is released, Revelation 16, 17 says, it is done. It is done. The judgment's done. Then in Revelation 16, 9 says, and the angel came and said, Babylon has come up for a remembrance before the Lord. And that word remembrance is memnescabi. It means to recall from memory. The angel says, hey, I want to show you something, that God's remembered something from memory, how this thing got started. And then in Revelation 17, 1, it says, the angel says, come with me and I will show you the destruction of Babylon. Babylon among, for 2,000 years, theologians have said that Babylon exists throughout the tribulation period. That is not the case. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says, the angel says, come with me and I will show you the destruction of Babylon. And they're taken out of that time sequence. And that angel brings John and he describes this woman, this rich mm. woman with a golden cup in her hand. And, and um, she has 53 descriptions. And then in Revelation 17, 12, it says, and the beast and the 10 horns who have not yet received power don't like this woman because she's been sitting on them, Kathamia. This is where traditional Bible prophecy has totally missed it for 2,000 years and you cannot join the dots until you find out who Mystery Babylon is and the United States of America meets all 53 descriptions even today she's fulfilling Bible prophecy. And you've listed those in the book, The we've, Hour That Changes Everything. We've and listed them. That book, I've read the book. It's an excellent book. It, uh, it, it is, and I would encourage people to get a hold of that book because it's very important. How do they get a hold of the book? They can go to Amazon or they can go to our website, prophecyusa.org, and you can you can order it off the uh, website or directly from Amazon. But we'd prefer that you go to our website and get right. it. Right. But um, people are calling us from all over North America. And they're saying, I never understood the book of Revelation until I read this book. And the reason is because we've never figured out who Babylon was until now. So God has shown you or has spoken to you that, you know, it's American. And that makes a lot of sense because America is, you know, a dominant nation, all that. But it's an extension. It, it, I mean, when you go to Washington, you go to Washington, D.C., you see pillars like Rome, you see everything else. I mean, it's like yes. the extension of Rome. And so a lot of people have said, well, Rome, uh, that's the Babylon. Well, actually, go to Washington, D.C., and you can see the center of that. But anyway, the point is that you saw this in your vision. God gave you this vision, and this is what he told you. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it wasn't a vision per se. I did not have a vision or a dream. I had an audible voice wake me up at the end of the seven days. Now, this, this so this is, happened over seven days. It and happened then... over seven days. On the seventh day of the seventh night, an audible voice woke me up. An angel came in the room, touched me six times. And I was just 
I was wasted. I said, God, I can't handle this. I thought I was hallucinating or having a breakdown. But I want to emphasize something, Rod. When it comes to interpreting scripture, when these people had these experiences, they wrote the word down. Sometimes they didn't even know what they were writing. Daniel didn't know what he was writing. And it waits for an appointed time. If God releases an angel to deliver a word, why wouldn't he release an angel to interpret the word when it reaches its appointed time? There's people teaching Bible prophecy today that do not believe in miracles. They believe in cessation theology. How can these people interpret scripture when they don't even believe that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Now, it blew me away, the experience I had, and if it were not for Oral Roberts, I don't think I would have made it because I slept for three weeks with this book on my chest and I begged God, please don't let me lose my mind. I was scared to death. And I look and those men had the same experience. And God is getting ready to release something in America. And people are going to wake up in America of who we are in Bible prophecy. And, this, and, and I believe that that is coming. And, and people are getting woken up right now because America's under judgment right now. And the judgment isn't coming. It's already begun in America. And this is important to remember because a lot of teachers have taught for 50 years the way they teach. But things are changing now. Things are different now. Things are happening now. We've got all kinds of uh, schools, Christian schools taking place. They're bearing the brunt of uh, the transgender movement and the whole business. And it seems as if God has, and, and a lot of people believe it to be a political problem. It's not. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual problem. problem. And you don't solve a spiritual problem with political answers. And we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We so, wrestle not with flesh and blood. There is a spirit realm around us. And when that thing was opened up into my eyes, it, it, it shook me up. So this is, now, this is real stuff that you're talking about. This is and, real time. This is real time. God's on the move in America. He's in total control. And the spirits that are in America right now are going to fulfill every word that he has spoken about Babylon the Great, about the tribulation that's coming. These spirits are the same ones that crucified Jesus. They're the same spirits that fought against Elijah and against Moses and against every prophet. Nothing has changed except technology. People are still prone to listen to the wrong voices and go against this word. But yeah. this word is going to be fulfilled whether you believe it or not. And, you know, people like the Wycliffe Bible translators and all of that, they're getting the word into all of the uh, languages in the over 7,000 languages. But that brings me to this question. If we are facing things that are happening in our life uh, with inflation, with wars happening and all of that taking place and things, you know, people are shaking their heads and they're embarrassed by everything. Where does that leave the Christian? Where are we? Are, are we to panic and run and no. hide? And Well, what are we to do then? Um, the Bible says about Babylon that he fills her with men as with caterpillars. And in Revelation 18, 2, he says he hands her over to demonic spirits. The pe there's, a, there's a falling away of the nation and of the church. But then he says, come out of her, my people, be not partaker of her sins, nor in the plagues that shall come upon her. God is calling people, and we're getting uh, emails from people all over. My sheep will hear my voice. It's, God's design is for us to be like the sons of Issachar and understand the signs of the times. We shouldn't be shook up by what we're seeing because we already know it's in Scripture. So when he says, come out of her, my people, he's talking about come out from the world, from the confusion, Babylon means confusion, and get into his word. And he says, you keep your word, you keep your mind on me. He who keeps his mind on me, I will perfect keep you peace. in perfect peace. So everything can be falling apart, but you don't have to be falling apart. And if your Bible's falling apart, usually there's a good chance you're not falling apart. <laughs> That's because, right. You can get a new Bible, but because and, the, yeah. the folks that are the folks that walk in the Word are on top of things. What's going on? But this revelation of America 
is something that's never been taught in um, colleges, in seminaries. I'm going against the total trend of most people, except for certain people like um, David Wilkerson, A.A. A. Allen had a vision of America, um, Kenneth Hagin had a vision of America, and Oral Roberts, who was my good friend, the last open vision he had, he saw blood, smoke, and vapor go down the east coast of America, and the Lord spoke to him and said, 9-11 is a forerunner of things to come. Every one of those men had a revelation, the final revelation of America. They saw her being judged, and that's what I experienced. This is what's coming. We're in a judgment now, and, and um, I asked Brother Roberts before he died, and this was in 2009, what do you see coming? And he said, I see a separation wreck between the wheat and the chaff. And he said, this secular humanist, these secular humanist globalists, they're not going to come to God. They're going to harden their hearts just like Pharaoh did. And the wheat and the chaff will separate. And God will give them warnings. God will give them warnings. But when it's time, when that moment comes, when the rapture of the church takes place, the wheat will be harvested and the chaff will be burnt. And that will begin the tribulation period where God pours his wrath upon the earth. And you know, it's interesting because when I was 1991, I went to Israel for the first time, and that was when George Bush Sr. had uh, propagated the war, or started the war, I should say, not propagated it, but he resisted Iraq and started that whole movement. And I remember a speech that I heard, which is the next subject I want to talk about, um, and that speech related to, he said that uh, this is part of the New World Order. And that was interesting, because I remember hearing that thinking, the New World Order, what are you talking about? Now, all of a sudden, we hear that frequently. All we the time. hear it all the time. What in the world is going on when we have people and things happening with this new world order? What's that about? Um, 18 months ago, when we wrote this book, we talked about the new world order. We talked about the World Economic Forum. The hour that changes the everything. The hour that changes That's everything. That's the book, yep. We had all that 18 months ago. And there's a lot of people that would not interview me. Over a year ago. Over a year and a half ago. And now everybody's talking about the New World Order and the World Economic Forum. Well, we knew that in 1971, our former prime minister, Prime Minister Trudeau, formed something called the Club of Rome. And the Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Pierre right? Elliott Trudeau formed the Club of Rome, and it was all about global governance of the globe in which he said they wanted to divide the globe into 10 regions and they had to pull the globe and have one world government of global regions. Now in 1991 they they wrote a book called The Global Revolution from the Club of Rome and they said we're going to pull everything together and and what we have to do is we have to bring uh, the people into a critical mass theory where they they are all uh, joined together with one mind. We have to create something in order to bring people together. So we're going to bring climate change, we're going to bring pa world pandemics, we're going to bring food shortage, and all these things together will help pull the world together to form this new world order. And that's exactly what Pierre Elliott Trudeau's son, Justin Trudeau, it's exactly what Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum, it's exactly what the UN 2030 agenda is about, global governance. And they not only want food shortage, they're going to create food shortage because they need an emergency in order so they can control. Now, um, Henry Kissinger made this statement, if you control the food, you can control the people. If you control the energy, you can control the nation. But if you control the money, you can control the world. And that's where the World Economic Forum is going. And they're not, it's not the World Economic Forum, it's World Economic Fascism. That's what's happening. They have the same spirit that Stalin had, Hitler had, Mussolini had. They don't care how many people they hurt 
as long as they can get control. And this is something that the Bible talks about, about the Antichrist spirit, and it's coming. It's, 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 it, in fact, it's not only coming, Rod, it's here. Mm. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to fulfill Bible prophecy. They want a world without God. And you know what, Rod? God's going to give it to them. Mm. And that's amazing. And I think about Revelation 13 uh, in the comments regarding the beast that emerges out of the seas and, and the false Christ and all that talking about the end times. And I'm moving into the tribulation at this point because we'll talk about uh, what we call the rapture. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, he says here that he's going to create a number. And the number is a mark. A mark. And with that number, you can't do anything. You can't, you can't buy, buy or sell. You can't do anything. And this is something that a lot of people have misunderstood. And they said, well, this is the mark of the beast. And that's the mark of the beast. And, but the Bible tells us that the mark of the beast is a mark. And that's what the Greek word says, and that's what it forms. And so with that in mind, we're talking about something that's going to happen, something that is going to take place, and we're talking about it right now. Yes. In the last day Real of time. August, 2022, that's when we're taping this. <laughs> and, and we're sitting up in Canada right now, but we're sitting in a continent that God called Mystery Babylon the Great. And unless people can get that in them, they will not understand how this thing's going to come down. Okay, I'm an American. And, and see, for me, uh, I'm also a Canadian, but I'm an American, I'm a dual citizen. And it's hard because I grew up in the school system uh, in the United States of America. And the first time I went to school, um, I, I remember first grade, we were praying. And then the next day, uh, it was about halfway through the year. They said, well, we're not going to pray anymore. You know, we, we have a moment of silence. And then at the end of the year, the next year, we never prayed at all. And then in grade six, we used to say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic Absolutely. for which it stands, one nation under God. And, and this is important because then they stopped doing that. And all of these things began to diminish. So I, I see America as America the Great. But not anymore. I don't see America that way anymore. But America's, so many people still see it that way, and yet you're calling it Babylon. Well, America is the greatest country in the history of the world because she was raised up by the hand of God. In, in um, November 11, 1620, the pilgrims came across the Atlantic Ocean, and they came at, at uh, Plymouth Rock, and they cut a covenant with God. And they said, we dedicate this land to the carrying out of the gospel. And, and that was all in God's plan. And America grew under a covenant. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, she became the head and not the tail. He blessed her fields going in, going out. He gave her the greatest military in the world so she could sit on the seven mountains of the earth. And, and police, the word is kathamia, means to police over. And America is the greatest country in the history of the world, the most technically advanced, the most blessed. If you follow my voice, if you obey my voice, these things will happen. But if you don't obey my voice, for every verse of blessing, there are three verses of curses that will happen. And this is all from the Mosaic Law, God cut a deal with Israel. God came down and cut a deal with Israel. But America reached up and cut a deal with God. And all of us can walk in, in your own personal covenant if you want one. You can have a covenant just like Abraham had. But America and the soul of America has broke covenant with God. She's become the habitation of every foul and unclean spirit. And 400 years after that covenant was cut, something happened in America on November 3rd, 2020. What happened? There was a spiritual coup d'etat that happened in the United States of America with her leadership. There was a shift, a major shift took place. Hmm. When the Biden administration came in and anyone who's observing what's going on from the time they came in 
America has slid down. She's, she's run away from her enemy seven ways in Afghanistan. That's a curse. If you obey my voice, your enemy will come at you and they'll run seven ways away from you. Well, they'll run away from you. We left Afghanistan and we ran from a little Taliban army. Meanwhile, three million people invading America right now because the walls have fallen. That's another curse. It says your walls will fall and your enemies will come in. Then it says the land that I blessed and that the fruit of all your labor and I will prosper you because God's a good God. He wants his people to prosper. But if you disobey my voice, the land will not bear fruit. And when Joe Biden cut off the Keystone Pipeline and cut off the energy, now the land's not producing and we got energy problems all over the world. These are three curses that, that they opened the door since the Biden administration came in and now we're, we're in a situation where we've gone to Romans 1 where we've had a reprobate society where good is evil and evil is good and people don't understand what's right and what's wrong. And if you're a born again spirit filled Christian, people think you're evil. And that's a lie right out of the pit of hell. <laughs> and I tell you, there, I mean, there, there have been people. I mean, there's, there's Christian schools in Florida. They're uh, being attacked. And they're being attacked. And the regular media is going after them and, and attacking them. And all over the place, it's happening. So this is what happens. This, this, this is all what happens in Babylon the Great. Hmm. America's fulfilling prophecy right now. Again, I want to mention the book is available at your website. And yes. your website is prophecyusa.com, prophecyusa.com. It is a good book. I've read it. And Dot it org. Is, it, what's that? Dot org. Prophecy USA. Prophecy USA. Dot org. Dot Sorry. Org. Dot org. org. Couldn't get uh, calm. Okay, well, it's sometimes expensive. Anyway, uh, the idea is that if you get this book, you'll be able to read all of this and have this material that you can study. It. It's, it's really very, very interesting. Now, this new world order that's coming about, and uh, you talk about your early Prime Minister Trudeau. Then we talk about the current Prime Minister Trudeau as we speak today. Um, there's been a number of things that have happened and have taken place, and, and it's, it's like as a Christian, as somebody who believes in God and has loved the Lord for 40 years or more, um, I look at this and I say, what, what is this country? Because I'm a Canadian too. What is this country? What in the world is going on? What are the things, the next things in the new world order that we will see? We will see, uh, just like in the Netherlands, they want to take, they want to take private property and private land away from the farmers. That's why they're, they're doing this with the um, fertilizer. They're cutting back the fertilizer so the farmers can't make money. And then, and then just like in the Netherlands, the government in the Netherlands is offering to buy the land from the farmers. So that's called collectivization. Now here's something that's very, very strange. You hear everyone talking about a food shortage. If you have a food shortage, why would you cut the fertilizer for something that's going to happen 10 years from now called climate change. But people are going to die this year and these folks want to cut the fertilizer which will lower the food production. They are going to answer for everything they're inflicting on the nations of the earth. God is watching. Mm. God is watching. And this is what invokes judgment. What I do unto you, God will do unto me. If I'm, if I'm treat that's justice. you, yeah. that's justice. And so this is all uh, um, climbing up towards that day when the tribulation begins and God hands the planet over. They want a nation without God and a world without God. God will give them that. But the things that they're doing now, these initiatives are going to hurt people. The inflation is hurting people. They don't care. Hmm because they want control. And they go back to that three stage. If I control the food, I can control you. If I control the energy, I can control the nation. And if I control the money, the money, I can control the world. This is what they want to do. And the new digital currency that's coming is all about controlling you so you can't get your money 
out of the bank unless you meet certain criteria. And you you got to you got to walk and do exactly what they say or they're going to make your life miserable. And they're already doing it right now. And they don't care. Hmm. I have friends in in uh, Haiti that are feeding 650 kids a day. And now we're talking about food shortages. Hmm. People are going to die because of these initiatives that they're doing, and they don't care. But we're on to you. We're on to Trudeau. We're on to the World Economic Forum. We're on to your agenda. It's all in this book. You're not doing anything that the Bible didn't say you're going to do. And just like Hitler failed, Mussolini failed, there's coming a day when you're going to fail, and it's going to be really bad. The, the cost of that, uh, God is perfect in justice. He is the perfect judge. And I think what you said is so true, and it's in the Bible, that you want to treat others as you would like to be treated. Yes. And But the dictators are the, let me just say it this way, the original plan of these leaders who don't seem to love God, don't seem to know God, is to dominate. And when they dominate, they want to control. And we've seen examples of control through the scripture. This idea of a rapture is always fascinating because people will always say to me, well, I don't believe in a rapture. You know, you're chasing fairy tales and all that. And other people say, well, it's a rapture in the mid-tribulation. And we've got fights in the Christian church about rapture, rapture, rapture. Rapture's not in the Bible. Trinity's not in the Bible. All that, you know, the catching away or the taking up is clearly in the Bible. Yes. So my question is this, what in the world is the rapture? When's it going to happen? According to scripture, there's one time sequence that will tell us when it's going to happen. In Revelations 19, 6, 19, 19, 1 through 6, John is caught up into heaven. And there's rejoicing in heaven. And it says, uh, a multitude of voices are rejoicing. For God has judged the woman, has judged Babylon the great, and, and poured his wrath out on her. And then it says on verse 7, For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the bride hath made herself ready. The marriage supper of the Lamb is what happens right at the beginning of the tribulation period. Babylon is destroyed before or during the time of the rapture. That's the only time sequence in Scripture that nails it. Now, if you say America's not Babylon, if you say a, a Babylon's going to be in the tribulation period, it messes everything up. You can't understand it. But all of a sudden, you pull, you look at the time sequences and pull that nation, that rich, powerful nation, out in front before the tribulation comes. And when she's judged, the marriage of the Lamb begins, there you have the time sequence. And somebody said to me, I don't believe America's in the Bible. And I said, well, then why does she meet 53 descriptions? And they just look at you like a deer in the headlight. They haven't got a clue. They don't know scripture and they will not read. But somebody told them and somebody told them this. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Folks, we're in the end times. It's, I don't, I'm not against watching Dancing with the Stars or watching, but it's time to get in the Word and find out not what in the world's going on, find out what in the Word is going on because we're coming here to a climax. This thing is coming down. It's happening. Hmm. So God moves in and removes His people and suddenly there is a mass exodus and... This is what your next book is about. The next what book. is it called? <laughs> the next book is called The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. And it's all, the, when I say the Exodus, we're talking about um, that 400 year period of time, you know, from the, from the, mm -hmm. yep. from the day that uh, they cut a deal with God, the pilgrims did at Plymouth Rock, they cut a covenant. 400 years is a divine period of time. Egypt controlled the Israelites for 400 years. But at the end of that 400 years, God sent Moses to the Pharaoh and he said, give my people up. 
Now 400 is a derivative of 50 times 8. 50 is the time of Jubilee and 8 is the time of New Beginnings. That's the New Beginnings is when Noah and his eight family members came out. That's a time of New Beginnings. At the end of this 400 year divine period of time, on November 3rd of 2020, we had a shift. We had a shift when the Biden administration got in power and started changing everything about the Constitution. And everything starts falling apart at the seams. So when, when um, Moses was there, he said, let my people go. Pharaoh started persecuting mm. the Israelites. And the more signs and wonders that came, the more they persecuted. You touch God's anointed, you've touched God. What you do to his, what you do to a Jew, God will do to you. When, he, when, when these people come against the Christians and start persecuting us, that's the final stage of Babylon because judgment will come down. Now, when, when uh, God judged Egypt, it was a, a two-edged sword. He brought judgment to the Egyptians, but he brought deliverance and freedom to, to the, the Israel, children of yeah. Israel. And so that's exactly what happens at the end of Babylon. It's a two-edged sword that comes down. The world is handed over to Satan, but God says to his children, come up, it's time. And instantaneously, we're caught up in the midst of mass global confusion. And then, after the dust settles and the smoke clears, after that one-hour event, and it's in Revelation 18.8, 1810, 1818, 1819, Revelation 14:7, Isaiah 13:19, and uh, Revelation 14:7. It all talks about that one hour judgment. He says in the in uh, Revelation 3, to us, and he's speaking to us, because you have kept my word, I will keep you from the hour of trial that shall come upon the whole earth. I give unto you an open door that no man can shut. Just like when, when Moses and the children of Israel came out of that Egyptian bondage, we're going to come out of this supernaturally and we'll be caught up. And after the dust settles and the smoke clears from the sea of humanity will rise a one world government. A global census will be given and a mark will be issued on the right hand and on the forehead. And if you're here during that time, don't take the mark. This is the revelation that I was given over a period of seven days. That's what I was told. Now I can, I've got scripture to back all of that. And because the book is being fulfilled, how do you test prophecy? If the thing comes to pass, it's that true. is the thing which the Lord has spoken. Yeah, it's true. And you're not saying that you know the day or the hour or anything. No. That's not what you're saying. No, because no, nobody no. knows the day or nobody knows the hour. Nobody understands that because that's only the Father. That's right. Because that's the Galilean wedding. Um, the book is called uh, The Exodus. The Coming Exodus. The Coming Exodus. It'll be out probably in October. And, okay. Um, it Where goes, can they get it? We, we're not sure yet because of paper shortages. Okay. So I don't want to. I don't want to nail that down. All right. But they but can, you can get it pre -order. online. You can pre-order. Mm -hmm. You can go to our website and pre-order, and we'll make sure you get one of the first copies. All right. Very good. So that's the coming Exodus. The coming and Exodus. That's going to be really interesting, and I, I like how you've tied it in because it's true with Israel being with in, yes. in Egypt, and uh, America because it really is true. Uh, Four hundred years. Four hundred years. And the same time that, that by the way, eight is also the number of Jesus Christ for I a number of reasons. That. But anyway, we that's those that's numbers, but we can talk about that another time. But it's interesting because God has promised us that we will not be bearers of his wrath. No, we won't. His wrath is coming, and we have not seen the wrath of God. We've seen the wrath of man and we've seen the wrath of Satan. We've not seen the wrath of God. And I personally don't want to see that wrath. And I would encourage you to not see the wrath of God, to bring your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and bring it now. 
because God needs, well, he's, he's going to come and he's going to judge, and we need to get with him and say, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me of my sin and help me today because I believe you died on the cross and you rose again, and I need you in my life as Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when you pray that prayer and you really mean it, God will change your life. Trust me, he will, and that's very important. So, Rick, this is really important, and we need to remember that we can get the book, but at the same time, you know, if somebody is given a choice to take a mark on their hand or their forehead, then Don't my question it. is they probably were not aware necessarily of the rapture, or they were aware of it, but they didn't really pay attention to it, but now they're thinking about if it. If you miss the rapture, Jesus said, pray that you might be counted worthy to escape. He said, pray that you might be counted worthy to escape. Salvation is a gift from God. Yes, it is. Jesus paid the price on the cross. The rapture is a reward to the believers at the time that he comes, those who are fulfilling their calling and working and doing what they're supposed to do. Mm. And he will reward them. And that's why only five out of seven churches I'm sorry, five out of seven churches in the book of Revelation are rebuked. Yes, they are. They're, in, they're into all kinds of immorality. They're mishandling their money. They've lost their first love. Uh, they're lazy. They're lazy. They're not working for the Lord. They're not doing his... And only Smyrna, who's being persecuted, and Philadelphia, Philadelphia that's 30% of the body of Christ, according to Scripture. Now... No one can say, I can't say you're going to be raptured and I'm going to be or you're not going to be and I'm, that is not for us to know. That's God's decision. Pray that you might be found worthy to escape is what he said. Now that sends a chill down my spine and it makes me work a lot harder right now. It does. Especially because I know that I know that I know that this thing's happening. Hmm. I, 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 I watch it. And I look in this book, and you know, you said something that I just um, found a verse for. And it says that the Lord has no delight in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would come to him and repent and receive his salvation. God is a good God. God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health, but he's also a God of laws. If you don't follow his way, it's like gravity. Yeah. Gravity affects all of us. Sin is like that. Mm. If, you, if you disobey his voice and walk outside his word, and the litmus test is how you treat other people. If I treat other people the way I want to be treated, I fulfill all the law. Now, I have to ask Jesus to forgive my sins and apply the work of the cross. But if you're nervous what you're hearing right now, just do unto others what you'd have them do unto you and listen for that still small voice. And when he says, say a kind word to that person, you go ahead and do it. Or give somebody maybe a financial gift or help somebody or go and teach a Sunday school class. Whatever that still small voice is telling you to do, go and do it. And there'll be joy at the end of that when you serve God, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. But uh, people have to realize we are in serious, serious times right now.